Hi there, so great to see you and I hope you are well. I'm Jenny Kirk and this here is We're Yard and today we've got ourselves a little project and I'm going to be showing you just how easy it can be to hardwire DCC fit older non-DCC ready locomotives. Now this is an area that sometimes foxes a lot of people. You mentioned soldering and it's like you're uh, suggesting to somebody that they need to sacrifice a virgin at midnight with some uh, fresh lamb's blood just to be able to get that soldering to work. But it doesn't have to be that way and really DCC fitting your own locomotives is such a simple task. So today I'm going to be showing you just how you too can achieve great results. Come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. But just before we go on and I show you just how easy it is to hardwire DCC fit your older non-DCC ready locomotives, I'd like to ask a huge favour. Please, please, please tickle that like button, share this video on social media, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and ring that bell to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. You can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. We've got a number of different tiers of rewards, or you could become a channel member too with their own unique perks. And an extra special thanks to uh, Tim Krinsky, who very kindly sent in the Princess Coronation class locomotive that we'll be using today to show you just how easy this DCC fitting is. So let's get on to it. Warm up your soldering irons, let's go. Thanks to Tim Krinsky's generosity, We've now got a Princess Coronation in the streamlined form for the channel, but it's not a DCC ready model. Um, it is one of the super detail made in China versions, so it's actually got everything that the later DCC ready ones had except that socket. And what I'm going to do in today's video is a little project to show you just how easy it is to hardwire locomotives such as this to use them on DCC. You don't need to pay a shop or uh, another person to do it for you. Some of the hardwiring services can be quite expensive with additional charges of 40, 50, 60 pounds on top of the cost of the decoder. But you don't need to do that. You can really quite readily do it yourself. Now I've got the Trainomatic 8 pin decoder and uh, that's here in this box. There is a 6 pin in there but ignore that. It just happened to be I bought them together. And it is wired onto an 8 pin plug but I'm just going to chop that off um, so that we can use the hard wires to the locomotive. Now you can use the additional functions at a later date for future projects. So if you wanted for example to add working lights or a firebox flicker then that's perfectly easy to do using that. But for the scope of today's video, we're just going to get the model running. And so all we actually need is four wires from this eight pin loom. Uh, and that's gonna be the red and black. They go to the track, so to the pickups of the locomotive. And orange and gray, power the way, they go to the motor. And it's really simple, easy process. I've got some DCC Concepts S179 solder and their no clean flux. You can use what you have available, but I personally find that this combination makes soldering really simple and neat first time every time, which is why I use them. 
and we might not need these but just in case we do I've got some of the heat shrink from the same source but as an alternative I've been digging around and I've actually got some uh, nail varnish is what this is and uh, I just I had to really hunt actually I've got a box full of the kind of stuff I had as a teenager and a lot of them are dried up but um, I must admit Maybelline was always a good brand so that is still nice and liquid and you may be wondering why am I showing you um, nail polish well the reason for this is because this is very very fast drying and it's also an insulator so we can use this as a liquid insulation and we just paint it over the joints in the wires let them dry and that should give us a similar effect to using the heat shrink without any of the aggro and fiddliness so I've got that ready we've got a paintbrush for the flux and then I've got my wire cutters I've had to get my old set out because the covered monkey has borrowed my uh, nice sharp DCC concept ones and uh, hasn't yet given them back I'm sorry I think you'll find that you pinched my little snippers rather than the other way around. And then I've got my bus wire strippers again uh, from DCC Concepts and these are just um, for ease of use. There are other ways to strip wires but I find these to be really quite easy to use and I have them so that's what I'm going to use. Now first up we don't need to bother with the tender there are additional pickups in the tender um, and they'll work regardless of whether the locomotive is on DC or DCC so I'm just going to move that out of the way off the work area just to give us a bit more space. Now I'm going to be using a jeweler screwdriver. I've got the flat head blade and uh, what we need to do now is take the top off the model. Now what we need for this is just there underneath the front bogey we've got one screw. We can unscrew that. But then you just need to move the rear pony truck to one side and you can see another screw there and this is the shorter of the two screws you can see that that does come right out there and then the whole chassis can be easily removed now we've got a spacer piece don't lose that and then the very very long front screw I'm just gonna actually just load all of those up into the locomotive body but you can see that we actually have a lot of space available so much so you could even do a sound installation with stay alive and such like if you really wanted to but again that's for a future project now I'm going to move that to one side uh, keep it out of our workspace I'm going to put the uh, shrink wrap out of the way just in case um, we don't need it and um, not have that getting in our way and then we're going to take a look at the locomotive itself so this is actually really fairly straightforward we've got the red and black which are going to the pickups so we've actually got a little tab there which is quite helpful actually and at the back we can lose most of this we've got additional pickups coming from the tender and then out the back of this we've got some hard wires which go to the motor terminals so what I'm actually going to do first up is I'm going to unsolder that from the motor and uh, I'll just clean the soldering iron and I find it works better if you have a little bit of solder on the soldering iron not because you're soldering this but it just helps with the uh, quick transfer of heat which is what we want snip that off Going to get right in down there and then just snip it off is absolutely fine to do so we've now isolated the motor and we don't have color coded wires coming from the tender so we just want to be a little bit careful not to get them crossed over otherwise you'll introduce a direct short into the electrics and then what I'm going to do now, actually I'm going to move the solder out of the way. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space up here. Um, I can see that um, there is actually quite a bit of a mess in here. It's uh, not the neatest of jobs from the factory, it must be said. But we can separate out. 
I'm going to actually unsolder these. So if we do one side at a time. Oh man, that's hot. Just be careful you don't burn yourself. I do it so you don't have to. So that and this go together. I'm going to leave the other two attached for now. The reason for this is that if they're still soldered where they need to go, then I can't get them mixed up. Nibble off some of that mess that's on the end here. It's just a little bit trickier to do, must be said, with these. Not as good as the ones I normally use. Hint, cupboard monkey, please can I have them back? Um, and then I'm just going to, with these, very, very quickly, just try and get myself some clean bare wire. This is where we bring the flux in. Be very careful you don't uh, accidentally knock this over. Believe me, you don't want flux all over your work area. See, I think the decoder needs to sit up here. So for now, and this will all come clear later on, I am actually going to use a little bit of this uh, heat shrink and I'm just going to see if I can nibble a bit of that off. There we go. And always remember to put this over the wire first, otherwise you're going to end up with the uh, uh, nail polish otherwise. So I'm quite happy there. We can solder these two together. Just going to use a small amount of that and then place them together and solder them. Got a good join and then it's just simply a case of to protect from any shorts move the heat shrink down and then I actually use the head of the soldering iron, not the bit that you're putting the solder onto, but just behind that, because uh, we don't want to dirty the tip. It just gives us a bit of extra work to clean it otherwise. And we're just using the heat from the soldering iron to shrink down that heat shrink and get it to grip those wires. And that's nice, got that. And then what I'm gonna do up here is we're going to actually, let's start work on our decoder. So we're going to realistically, actually I'm going to cut that off fairly close to the plug for reasons that uh, I think we're going to need a little bit of extra wire here. And we need the black, the orange, the red and the grey. Everything else is auxiliary functions and the common return. So they're the ones I want, these are the ones that I don't. I'm actually going to just feed all of these off into some more of that shrink wrap just for neatness and uh, to make sure that they can't all get messed up elsewhere. So let's just feed all of these in. I'm loath to cut them off because I might have some future projects that uh, I add. Things like Firebox Flicker is one thing or working lights. So I just want to keep the options open so that uh, we can if we want still easily make use of these additional auxiliary functions. So that there nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do is uh, just very, very neatly take a small amount of the insulation off each of these and then we're going to tin them. And we'll tin them all on mass. The next step, just tin these wires. It is a multi-strand wire so this not only prepares them for uh, doing the uh, soldering, but also you can see there we've got a little strand that's desperately trying to escape. It also effectively sticks all the strands together because you don't want 
any stray strands because what will happen is that there is a very big risk that they could get free and cause a short which we don't want. Let's get this soldered to the motor. So orange and grey power the way. Still got flux on the brush so I'm going to just get a little bit on there and there. It just helps things to uh, to do what they need to. So we've got grey. Not convinced. Has that gone on? Yes it has. The orange. That's in and that's good. And on awkward bits like this, if you really want to, we can add in just a little bit of nail polish. Not strictly speaking necessary, but there you go. Those are insulated from anything that might stray in their direction and just that will dry all on its own. Next up, whilst we're here, red super easy because we just dab it straight onto there. We will make use of the pre-existing solder tab. There we go. And again, just in case, I'm going to put a tiny amount of this on. Think of it as liquid insulation. And the black wire, see if we'd have been, if we'd have had our thinking hats on, we'd have uh, put that in there, but it's okay because we can break into this wire. And this is the other party trick of the bus wire strippers. We're going to part the insulation. And you'll see there, what we've actually done and slid the insulation back without actually breaking the uh, the core of the wire. And this, as we tin that, is a really good way of adding in extra connections after the fact to a wire. Really simple. And there we go. We've got our little Y joint, and we really will need the liquid insulation on this now. So just going to quickly dab a little bit of that on. And then the final thing that I need to do here is to uh, just remove the remains here of this. We do not need to keep this. If anything, it will probably hamper the performance of the model if we were to leave this component in. I think it's the suppressor and it just isn't needed when you're running on DCC to the point where it uh, can actually uh, degrade the signal and uh, then you get weird results. I've never experienced that, it must be said, but um, it is a possibility, so whilst we're in here, why not? Now, I've managed to just trim a bit more than I was planning there. There we go. And we've also got pickups coming across from the tender. Just take your time. Tin both of these. A little bit of solder onto the iron. And you see how easy that flux just makes it happen. No issues no blobs of solder, just the way we want it. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to use a different colour just because, so let me just prepare a small piece of heat shrink. Did turn out we needed it. And I'm just going to slide that on, recharge the soldering iron. Let's just get a little bit of flux, flux, it's better to use a little bit more than you need than a little bit less, in all honesty, with you. I'd rather use slightly too much than slightly too little. Now slide the heat shrink over. And just slide this up. There we go. And then let's work that heat shrink. 
With thin wires, sometimes you just have to be a little bit careful until it's shrunk enough to grip. Otherwise, you can accidentally drag it off the join. But no problems here. Now, we just need to neaten things up here. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do for this is use some captain tape, which is, I think it's actually from the audio industry. I do remember using this for splicing um, open reel tapes back in the day. I'm sure it was this stuff. Um, but it's also perfect for this job. So I'm going to take that out of the box. And all we're going to be doing is tidying up the wires. just want to make sure that uh, these wires aren't going to get trapped, pulled, jammed into the mechanism and for that we can just get a little bit of captain tape just hold everything into place now we have lots of space available on top of the locomotive the decoder comes ready uh, insulated it's got like a clear coating over the top which is perfect for doing this because you don't have to worry about any shorts on your decoder or um, the solder points because they're all protected. So I'm just going to very carefully uh, get some captain tape down and onto there just to hold everything neatly into place and then we can uh, get the body back onto the locomotive. We've got this sort of extension piece there. That can be a little bit fiddly. So let's just prop that up. There we go. And then what I tend to do with these is to get the long screw through on the front, turn it all over, and then we can just drop that down into place. And that way, that extension piece doesn't fall out. Just tighten that down. And then don't forget the rear screw. So we're going into that. And that's picked up the thread. And that, as simple as that. So we now have a DCC fitted Duchess of Gloucester. And uh, let's get it over onto Wear Yard and get it all checked out. And you can see that we've got a really smooth, responsive locomotive, which just works. Now, I took my time a little bit on this DCC fit, simply because more than anything, I was talking you guys through the process. But it is ridiculously easy to do. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's little project and found it informative and I'd like to think that maybe it's inspired some of you to have a go yourself and really all you need is confidence in your own abilities and you too can do these projects yourself. An extra special thanks as well goes to Tim Krinsky who very kindly sent us the Princess Coronation locomotive that we used in today's video and it's going to be running up here on Weir Yard looking resplendent with those LMS coaches. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below and uh, just what did you think about today's project? Is it something that you're going to try and tackle now? Has it uh, given you some degree of confidence to do it yourself? Or maybe you've been DCC fitting your own locomotives for quite some time now and maybe want to share some of the hints and tips that you've built up through experience. It's always great to hear from you all. Please like, share and subscribe and also head on over to Patreon where you too can help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see or you could become a channel member 
number two and there's a whole host of different unique perks for all of those and a huge thank you to everybody who helps make this channel possible. But until next time this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling, happy soldering, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.